gamma scan, okay, by Atomic Rods. Uh, it's a sensor that mounts on the rear of your riser, okay, that streams movement data through Bluetooth to our phone app. Currently on Android devices only. iOS will be coming, okay. Um, it's, it has an LED here that you mount facing towards you. It has a USB rechargeable battery, like just like a phone charger, okay. okay. Velcro st strap on it so it can be easily mounted to different bows. You don't have to permanently mount anything to the bow, no adhesive yeah. or anything like that. No right. glue, no stuff. Right, right. Yeah. So it works great for uh, you know students, the coaches, they can transfer easily from bow to bow. Oh, perfect. Yeah, right. And uh, we'll go over on the, the app okay. here and we'll show you that. But they're all, they're all this. So this is the phone app, okay? <clears throat> Um, there's a settings tab up at top here where we can change some user definable uh, fields such as sensitivity currently. We're going to be adding more to that. Okay? Um, you can put in beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Changes the sensitivity of the sensor. Okay? Okay. We found that um, when you're using this, uh, we had it set at one level and um, we needed a more um, sensitive sensor for pros because they don't move quite as much. Okay? Yes, yes, and you'll yes. see when it's we like show a G sensor. The, right. Yeah. It's got accelerometers and stuff yeah. on it. Yep. Okay. So once we do that, it'll go back to the home screen. We're going to click on new session. And this is where it's going to pair with the sensor. Okay. So like any pairing with any other Bluetooth device, um, it takes a few seconds. The sensor actually goes into a sleep mode when um, you haven't used it for a while. So to save battery life. Okay. It takes a second to wake the sensor up. Um, once it's detectable on your device, you click on gamma scan, then it'll start to pair with it. Uh, once it's connected to your device, the LED turns blue so you know you're connected. Okay? And it takes a second here. So the next screen is kind of where all the magic happens with the software. Okay? To see the graph here, you're going to put in your shooter shooter name, okay? Yeah. All the data from that point forward is stored underneath that username, okay? Okay. So we put in uh, Bob's hunting setup or, you know, white target bow, whatever yes, you yes, want, yes, okay? Right, yeah. um, put in your draw weight, draw length, and we're, we're going to be adding some fields to this for to track even more information, okay? Uh, front stabilizer length, front weight on that stabilizer, rear bars, V bars, whatever you want. Or you might start with no stabilizers, okay, okay. As, the, as the first yeah. graph, okay? Once that's in there, you're going to hit record, okay? There's a seven second delay. It gives you time to get up on target, draw back, get anchored, okay? Yeah. Um, and then so you aim just like you normally would, right? After the seven seconds is up, this blue LED on here turns green and you get an audible beep so you know it's recording, okay? Okay. And you just aim like you normally would and it's recording in like and showing you, streaming in live time, that movement pattern of the sensor and your pin. Okay? Um, so the idea being you want as small of a movement pattern as possible. Right? Um, after 10 seconds of recording, the, this LED turns blue and it gives you two audible beeps so you know it's done recording and you can release your arrow or, or let down. Okay? okay? So it's recording that 10 second time frame of aiming basically. Okay? okay. So what we're going to do is once we record once, we go back in, make some changes, and record again, repeat that whole process up to four times per session, okay? Okay. Um, with the idea of trying to make that movement pattern get tighter and tighter, okay? Um, you see how it's superimposing the different graphs, one through four, and color over top of the graph, so you can see what's happening. <clears throat> once it does the fourth one, we'll go to the best shots, and it, that's the results page, okay? You also see on the bottom here it has, shows the battery percentage. So if you you know you got plans to to work with ten kids in, with this, you know you want to make sure the battery's charged before yeah, you start, right? Right. Yeah. So I did the last graph there. We go to best shots, and the results page is going to come up. So the the software actually um, ranks the those four shots, one through four, with one being best, okay? Um, and I went forward your stabilizer setup or whatever we're tracking. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can select, obviously, what the best graph is. Okay. Now, obviously, we probably want to shoot more than four, so you go back to a new session, and then you repeat that process all over again. So under that username, you've shot eight times, right? Yeah. You go back to the results page, the, the software is is always calculating the best four shots out of those eight at this point. Okay. 
okay? So you can continue to narrow down your best setup on the results page, okay? Um, and that's stored under your username under the, uh, uh, a tab where you can view last gra past graphs. You can go in there without even being paired to your sensor anytime sitting on your couch at home and see your graphs and export those, okay, and save them. Okay, so they're always that information is always stored on the device, whether it be a tablet or phone. Okay, and then, uh, when you, if you're all done, you just dis disconnect and the blue light turns off, and then you're done.